Hey guys, how's it going? So, <clears throat> according to the dictionary, dwarf, a person of unusual, yeah, unusual small statue, a person whose height does not exceed four feet ten inches and is typically less than four feet five, an insignificant person, folklore, a small legendary man-like being who is usually misshapen and ugly and skilled as a craft man. Well, today you're gonna watch me paint one of those guys. In fact, you're gonna watch me paint all the steps of those guys. Thank you for clicking on another Paint It Polybones Tabletop Miniatures. Today we're gonna paint a dwarf for massive darkness. Enjoy. You're gonna see these guys. All right, so the first color I'm gonna use is uh, P3, Midland Flesh. We're gonna go around and we're gonna use this as a base coat and we're gonna paint all the flesh on him. I'm gonna try not to make too much of a mess, but really on his face, he's got um, his nose, some eyes, Got a lot of facial hair. You want to get the lips covered inside there. It's okay if you make a mess, actually, of this, because this is the first color. Don't forget his ears popping out. Got a lot of skin on this guy. Little dwarfs are fun to paint. These are for massive darkness. We'll keep on painting these. Getting closer to finishing this game. Using a number one brush from uh, One Happy Choice. They're uh, they're good brushes for a cheap price, really. I mean, every brush I've used has a point in time where it says goodbye to you. But. Um, Because brushes don't last so much, you can find decent brushes that do a really good job, or a decent job. And if you're not spending too much money on them, then it's okay. Just doing his knees. I think I've got them all, got it all. First flash. Yep. So that's the uh, Midland flesh as a base for his skin. All right, so the next color that we're gonna do is um, Reichland Flesh Shade. And it's a shade, we're gonna go over all the flesh um, that we just finished painting with this wash shade um, and it's gonna darken everything up and get inside the uh, the details for us looks better when it's dry this helps uh, define all the muscles on him as well on his face and ears This step doesn't take too long. Washing's quick, fun, and easy. So we're just going to um, 
worst thing about doing these videos is trying to, <laughs> trying to think of a lot of stuff to talk about. So you're not just staring at a blank screen unless you prefer me not talking. And then you can just comment below and say, dude, just shut up and paint, man. I want to hear your nonsense while you're painting. It's mostly, it is nonsense. Some stuff's good, though. Okay. And that's all it took for this guy. We'll let that dry. Okay, now that that wash is dried, I'm gonna give it a dry brush of P3 um, Rain Flesh. Now, it's a nice light skin tone, and you wanna um, get a pretty decent dry brush to do this. And all I'm gonna do is hit up the um, raised areas. Layering, layer, layering would probably be a better effect, but it's a board game. And I like painting these things pretty quick when I can. This doesn't take long. Actually makes the skin pop out a little bit, which is good. Don't forget the back of the ears. Lip. But it's the effect that you're looking for. Alright. There you go. That's dry brushed with uh, P3 Rain Flesh. Okay, so now that the skin is finished, I'm gonna paint his beard. I'm gonna paint it with uh, Citadel's Wild Rider Red. Now you wanna be careful when you're painting this that you don't get anything on his skin. You wanna do it right the first time. Um, because it'll save you time going back and painting or repainting stuff um, slows you down so I usually start with the beard first he's got hair bangs eyebrows it's a good base you're going for that ginger look. I like it. Paint says that it's a red, but it's like a, a dark orange. So, when it comes to paints, it's always good not to judge the color based off the name, but to, um, Try out the color first, paint with it. Once you start learning your paints and what colors they are and what they dry out to be and what they work better with, what washes, painting becomes easier for you. <laughs> like playing an instrument. You start to know your colors. And once you're pretty good at knowing your color, you start adding new colors into your into your palette start learning those and with experience you get um, you get better by knowing your colors and what they work better with right first you're always gonna make mistakes still well you'll always make mistakes doesn't matter how long you've been painting for or how professional you are I think anyways, I don't consider myself professional. I consider myself a decent painter. But um I'm not professional. I like painting dwarfs with ginger hair. 
Reminds me of Lord of the Rings. That's the base coat. Okay, now that we've got the uh, Wild, Ri Wild Rider Red on, we're going to give the hair and beard a wash with uh, Citadel Shade Sephirum Sapia. Sephirum Sapia. And you're going to take the same size brush, number one. Um, this is good because it kind of gives it like an orangey brown to it. Same thing, you want to be kind of careful around the skin as well. And get the bangs, mustache. I like this color mixed together because it's a nice look. And it gets in there, cleans it all up for you. What's good about wash? Washes or shades. Citadel's now coming out with their new um, contrast paints. So that'll be interesting to see. How those make things a lot quicker and easier for us. And the eyebrows. Big bushies. Alright, we'll let this dry. Okay, now that we're finished with the wash, we're gonna give his beard and hair a dry brush with um, Citadel's Averland Sunset. And this will give us that um, blondish, orangish, orangish ginger look, I guess. Just be careful with it using a small dry brush. You don't want to get it all over the place. Not that you've done now that you've done a good job this far. All right. This helps the hair pop out. That's good. Don't forget those eyebrows. Be careful on the upstrokes. And thin, tiny hits around the mustache. There you go. That's all you need. All right. Now that we're done with the hair, we're gonna do the um, the cloaker cloth that he's wearing. And we're gonna use Citadel uh, Technical Paint, and we're gonna use Night Haunt Gloom. Now, I know this paint is usually used for like spirits and stuff like that, ghosts, but you know what? Also does a really good job for that one stop or one step paint where you're not really, really do much more to gives it quite a bit of definition um, and color right off the bat. In fact, I think this is probably one of the paints that maybe gave uh, Games Workshop the idea for their um, contrast paint that's coming out. But I like this color. Looks good. It's 
mostly in the back where this comes in. There's some in the front as well. Get around this hammer shaft. Oops. This fills in everywhere nice and neat too. Just gotta be careful with your brush. Alright. And that is Night Haunt Gloom. Now that we've got the cloth all finished with the uh, Night Haunt Gloom, we're going to use Balor Brown from Citadel and we're going to paint the boots and the sacks that are on his back. And just the two areas. I like using this color. Um, I've used it for the theme of Massive Darkness mostly for their shoes and boots and stuff like that and the sacks the bags pouches I think it complements everything well been very careful through all these steps shouldn't have had to come back and um, touch up anything yet but if you have that's okay it's not the end of the world right just the more practice you have with the brush the more control you have right Sacks. I call them sacks. Pouches. Utility pouches. Not sure what these uh, dwarfs are carrying in all of these pouches. I mean, they're carrying a hammer. Maybe a little bit of food. Um, some tools, right? They're dwarfs. They've got some tools. Build traps. Okay, so that's all we're going to use Ballard Brown for. For boots and the packs. Okay, now that we've got all the pouches finished. We're going to use Citadel uh, Doom Bowl Brown and we're going to do the gloves and um, a bit of his belt that comes up. So I'm just going to be very careful. I'm getting there. I'm just got like a little bit of this on top. It's like the top part of his. Um, Whatever the 
the hell he's wearing. I don't know what it's called. I want to say skirt. Because that's exactly robes. Robes? Is that a good word for it? No. This wraps all the way around. It's a good color too. Doom brown, uh, Doom Bowl brown from Citadel mixed with, um, if you're gonna do highlights on this, mixed with uh, red leather from Vallejo are really good together. Use, uh, Red leather from Vallejo as a highlight for this. Get the gloves. Remember, it's always okay if you make a little bit of mess painting on the stuff you haven't painted yet. Right? That would be getting it off the primer. You still want to be pretty careful. Sometimes, if you have white primer, um, I like using white because if I use like a wash instead of a paint right on top of it, everything's the same color. But if you make a mess and get a little bit of paint on the white that you're going to use a wash on instead of painting, then you're going to get some differences. Another glove. No glove, no love. In this case, we're going to be painting the um, the handle of the hammer a darker brown, anyways. So if you get some on that, it's not going to be a big deal. And. We'll wash all these browns at the end. Good one leaf there. No one's gonna look underneath there anyways, but you never know when your model might tip over. Happen to be in the right light. You never know. Okay, anyways. So that's the, uh, the gloves and the top of the belt I'm done for this guy. Now that we're done the um, the gloves and the belt, we're gonna do the stick of the hammer. We're gonna paint this Citadel um, dried bark. Step is not that bad. Just gotta be careful not to get the gloves. And you might have noticed that I haven't put any wash or done anything else to the other browns. That's because I'm painting all my browns now so I can wash it together. This way I'm not going back and forth to save time. It's good when you can group colors like that. Usually with the browns it's very easy but you know if you can do the same thing when you're doing uh, black wash or uh, green wash, anything really. Um, most commonly, you'd be able to save time like this with brown, so that's what I usually do. Shave the town with the browns. Alright. A few more browns. Actually, there's one more brown. And after this, that we're gonna paint, and that's gonna be his cap. His hat, his cap. Not really a helmet, so. There you go. It's the hammer stick. You can see he's coming along. Alright, hipsters. So, now that we've done the, uh, the handle for 
the hammer, the next brown we're going to use is Band Blade Brown. And we're going to do this for his cap. And I believe that's the only area we're going to paint this color. But we're getting there. It's a nice color too, especially when you put the um, wash on, which you'll see next. The next step, step number, whatever the hell it is. That's the thing when you're painting miniatures, um, depending on what you're doing, I guess. But you start to, well, the more paints that you own, you start, um, you don't realize, sorry, how many colors you're actually putting into a miniature until you do something like this when you start like recording your paint pattern. And that's it for this guy. And that's him. Okay, now that we got the cap finished and basically all the brown finished, we're gonna wash all the brown with Agra, uh, Citadel Agrath Earth Shade. And you do everything from boots. Get in there. It's always good to find a, um, a pattern where you basically what you're going to start washing when you're washing all this stuff to what you're going to not wash, right? I usually go back to my first steps of painting. Wash what I painted first. So I'll do all my Valor Brown that I started with. Washing all that. I really don't want to touch his hat. I did just paint those. I don't want to rub any paint off. But and um, for most of this stuff, I'm not going to do um, a highlight or a wash. So that's the shoes. Let's do the belt. Gloves. And the gloves are finished. You do the hammer. finished with the cap. to it. So it looks wet right now, um, but when it dries, it'll look much better. And then we'll do some touch-ups on some of it. Okay, now that my uh, brown wash is all dried, <clears throat> I'm just going to do a little bit of um, dry brush highlight to the staff, or the handle to the hammer. Right, I'm just going to take a small dry brush I just want to catch some of the grains 
on the hammer, and it's not much. It doesn't take long to do this step. So that's about it. And, um, so that's giving a little bit of highlight to the hammer. That's all we're doing in this step. Okay, now that we're done uh, giving a little highlight to the handle of the hammer, we're going to take a thin brush, a tiny brush, and we're going to do the stitches in his hat and his teeth with uh, Iraqi sand from Vallejo. So we're going to be very careful when we're doing this. We're just going to put a little bit of paint on the brush and slowly hit the stitches. We want to be very careful because these things are a little tiny. It helps give the, um, the hat some character. I mean, you can keep it the same if you want and not do it. So that's the stitches. You want to there and poke the teeth. And that's all you're doing. Just kind of poking it with the brush very carefully. Okay, something a little brighter that helps pop them out. Because you don't want the teeth being the same color as the skin. There's what? Two teeth really that kind of make it. A little, a little bit, yeah. Give him a little hit. Just like that. Sometimes if you get an in small, it's like using um, a sniper rifle where you want to hold your breath a little bit just so you can keep steady but um, stitches two teeth in there with um, Iraqi sand okay now that we've got all the uh, browns finished and um, some of the highlights on it from the teeth what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the head of the hammer and we're gonna make it stone, we're gonna make a stone hammer. So we're gonna use Vallejo London Gray. And we're just gonna do the um, bottom of the hammer here. Don't forget to do the underside. And the top back part. This is just a base color. Um, all painted gray. So that's Vallejo London Gray on the hammerhead. Okay. <clears throat> now that we've got the hammer painted with the um, the London Gray, uh, we're gonna give it a wash of Citadel Nolan Oil. Now we also have the. Um, the metal to paint after as well and that gets a wash too and I did say that uh, it's preferred to paint what colors you're going to paint and do a wash but I mean there's also certain circumstances I guess when you want to kind of like dry brush this and not get any paint on your metal either right so you gotta take certain steps a very quick step just giving it a nice wash and then letting that dry before we get to the dry brush. Okay, so the next color we're going to use is uh, Vallejo Deck Tan, and we're going to use two different brushes for this. Um, we're going to use a dry brush, and that's what I'm going to use right now. And we're going to use a dry brush of this for the hammer, right? Because you want it to kind of look like chip stone. Right, so I'm just going to be a little careful. Try to get it on the edges much as you can. Right. Give it some wear and tear. 
Alright. Nice little dry brush. Didn't want to go too crazy. But you want to do it good enough that you define the areas. So that's dry brushing the stone for the hammer. Now the next brush you're going to use is one of those uh, artificer layers, really tiny brush. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to give them some eyeballs. Right? I'm just going to be very careful getting in there. Very, very careful. And there you go. Now he's got eyes and a proper stone hammer. Okay, <clears throat> we're getting down to the uh, nitty gritty of this. So now that we have the hammer and the eyes done, we're going to use Citadel uh, base lead belcher. And we're going to do the um, belt first and be very careful you've done a good job so far you don't want to go back now and start redoing stuff right so this thing wraps all the way around his waist and get all the way around It's also got a lot of um, little buttons and stuff that we're going to do before we get the hammer. So it's pouches, so be very careful. We're going to do the buttons on them, this as well. It also has the studs on his gloves. Very careful on those. And the hammerhead itself. And be very careful. pretty bright right off the bat with this stuff but once we give it a wash of um, known oil it looks a lot better it makes it look more faded okay so that's him it's lead belcher all right so the last step um, of painting this guy is going to be the wash of uh, Citadel Nala oil. Now I'm just going to go over all the metal that we've uh, already painted. Um, this will give us some detail. So this will be the last step um, that I'm going to show you. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I'm going to do the base after this um, and give it a matte spray of uh, protective co clear coat. Um, but if you if you like the bases the way that the bases are done, you can watch my how to paint goblins video, which I posted uh, a few weeks ago, I think. Um, and I go step by step with the bases on that as well. And also check out a couple other bases uh, bases videos that I have as well. I've got the uh, stone bases, which I did for the heroes for this game set, and I also have a video on some. Um, uh, swamp ish type of 
base that I did on some of my zombies for a Warhammer. Citadel, Citadel zombies. Anyway, so that's the wash on the metal. Um, next scene you will see these guys done. Hey guys, as promised, the, uh, the finished dwarf. Um, I've done the base. Like I said, if you want to see the base, how it's done, you can go back and look at my goblin video. I uh, go step by step on the base for that one. And you can do the same thing for this. But um, he's got the base done. He's got the mat uh, finish on him. But that's what, uh, that's what this guy looks like when he's fully completed and he's ready for the game board. Um, painted 12 of these at the same time while doing this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll uh, see you at the table. Well, that was a fun few days of painting dwarves. Um, actually, it didn't take as long. I painted 12 of those guys while doing that video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, you can apply some of the techniques and some of the fast painting uh, that I did with the dwarves and you can put it towards any type of dwarves that you're painting or, you know what, you can use some of the color matches that I did and apply it to anything else you're painting, like the beards, right? It doesn't have to be a beard just for a dwarf, it could be a beard for anything you're doing, the skin. There's a lot of stuff with that uh, tone of skin that you can apply with those colors. So, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe so you can see much more videos coming your way. And, uh, well, <laughs> time to fireball out.